All right, so welcome back to the experimental part of lab eight. And remember, that's the axial magnetic field of a circular current loop. And uh, we have a, a current loop with 500 turns. Now, when you actually do this lab uh, here on, on ground, you actually have to do two coils. One is 200 and one's 500. But for actually just demonstrating it, I got rid of the 200 and put the 500 because the more turns you have, the more B field you're gonna get. All right, so, um, and then when I give you the data, 100 turns and 500 turns, and then you can plot the graph of those two, and then check that out. And then for the second experiment, we're just going to use the 500 turn and see how the B field looks as you go up and down the X axis. Uh, by the way, how do you like my halo? Does it look good? <laughs> May the Lord be with you. And hopefully, all, one day, we'll all be angels. All right, so this is a setup right here. And we use capstone again. This jewel right here, this is called a two-axis magnetic field sensor. And it will measure the B field going right into that white dot right there. And it'll measure the B field going right into that white dot right there. Now, we're not interested in the perpendicular B field. We're only interested in the axial. And we're, here's our coil of wire right here. You can see that. It's a, on a stand here to hold it still. And you can see the wires hooked up to it for the current. And I'm measuring the current with... So you can see I'm coming right out of the power supply. The power supply is at 14 volts right now. Going into the current, then coming out here, and then going to the coil, and then going back home. The black wire right there. Now, I turn the current all the way up on the power supply, and because the coil's got resistance to it, because it's made of wire, um, I can just turn up the voltage, and then the voltage will change the current. I don't really, I'm not really interested in the voltage value, though, so I have an ammeter right here to keep track of the current. So we want to change the current, and then see what we get for a B field, all right? And right now, I got 0 .780 uh, amps going through that coil of wire. All right, now to set this thing up, it, to put it at the center, uh, you gotta do your best job. So I like to like stand on the side here and like with one eyeball, uh, go like that and when I see it coming out and then come back, go back in and get a feel for that distance and I think that's pretty good. That's about centered. Now I also had to center this whole thing so that that probe right there, that probe right here, that's the center. Oh, I was on the wrong side. You see, this guy right here, this is the very center right there. Okay, and you can see that now. Uh, it looked like it was off to one side. It's been a while since I set this up and I put the probe on there. So it's either here. See, I use this nice little rail right here to guide it back and forth when we do the second experiment. So let me get it back in the middle again. All right, that looks good. All right, so that's it right there in the middle. Now, we got a problem. The Earth has got a magnetic field. So we have to get rid of the Earth's magnetic field. So I'm going to go over here, and I'm going to turn off the power supply. I don't want any current flowing yet. And I'm going to go ahead and turn on. This is my, my magnetic field um, digital display. So it goes into uh, the UI right here. And then we can plot it on a little, uh, what they call it a digit, a little display. And it's in millitesla right there. So the unit of magnetic field is called the Tesla. And I am going to go ahead and push record right now. And you can see it's very low because just a few minutes ago, I had already zeroed the thing out. But I'm going to zero it again because the Earth has a magnetic field that's coming into the experiment. And so what you do is you take this device right here, which is called a zero gauss chamber. Uh, people on the street just call it a degausser because it gets rid of the magnetic field. And uh, I put the nose of the sensor in there and then I got a button here to zero it. So I'm gonna go ahead and zero it and you can see it's very, very low now. Very low value, nearly zero. That's just noise, noise in the, in the electronics. Okay, so that looks pretty good.
And that, that does, it looks really good. So that's the setup right there. And when I turn it on now, you'll see the B field due to just the current that is in the wire. And that's about, we'll see what that is again. Okay, so that is, oh, I just lost my uh, ammeter. Hang on one second. Okay, good. That's 0.783 amps. Now, you know, when you collect data, a lot of times you want really nice values, but I wouldn't worry about that so much. Just go ahead and sweep through all of the voltage values. Now, you know, I'm just gonna give you the data, but if I were doing this experiment and uh, you were in a normal lab situation, you gotta get this done in a hurry anyway, because setting this whole thing up so it's nice and straight and you're right in the middle of the coil of wire, it takes a while so we're gonna go ahead and just pick any old value we're gonna take about 10 values and we'll start with a very low voltage there's a course setting right here so we'll go down to like there's 1.37 volts is the bottom there and uh, in fact the current is so low you could actually go to another scale if you want more digits but we're not gonna do that but anyway you could go to a different scale and get more digits but 1.37 uh, volts is producing a current of 0 0.065064 amps, which is 64 milliamps, and a B field of 0.17. See, now notice it's fluctuating. They call that random error. All right, so look at the fluctuation, look at the fluctuation, look at it, look at it, and pick a number. I'm gonna pick 1.75. I did see it go into the upper 60s. I saw it go up into the 180s, so I'm gonna pick 175. All right, so let's go to another another value. All right, there's about three volts, 0 0.4, 0 0.406, how does that sound? Okay, and right there I got 0 0.150 amps going through there, so I'd write that down. I'm not interested in the voltage. All right, we should give it another shot, 5.95, I got 0.88, hold it. Careful, how about 8.64, how's that sound? That sounds good, all right. You could take a whole bunch of measurements. You know, I thought there was an averaging up here, but I don't see it. Um, I thought I could average this thing, but I don't see it. Maybe it's up here, wait, let me check up here. Ah, here it is, I can do it right here. Here, we can take an average. Where is it? I just turned, yeah, where is it? I don't, oh, that must be the average. Huh. It's still flying around. Okay, but anyway. Uh, all right, we'll do, we'll do one more. Let's go, let's hit, let's go for the full blast. We go up to 18 volts. Whoa, 1.09, 1.10 amps. 18, you don't need that number, but we're up to 18.5. 2.765, uh, 5, what do you think, Tom? 2.75. 2.75, uh, wait, 2.75, 2.750, okay, good, perfect. And that's how you do the first experiment. All right, so does that seem uh, pretty good there? So that's looking good, I don't think I missed anything. Let me show you how to set this thing up right here. So when you want this type of display, you just go to digits, double click on it. All right, so you see I got another one here and I can go ahead and pick. Um, in fact, I could pick the perpendicular component of the magnetic field and that's what it is right now. So there's a slight, a very slight, let me put this in uh, milli, wait, milli? Where's milli? Oop, wrong one. Here's where you change the unit. Milli, 0.16, so maybe I didn't get it quite right in the very center of the, um, the, the loop, because I shouldn't have any perpendicular component. Okay, so you can see your, your professor has a slight systematic error. All right, so we're gonna t shut that down, and then we're gonna do another video for experiment number two. So, see you soon.